Once upon a time, we walked among the divine, woodland gods and satyrs drunkenly ambled through the wood. Tribal culture worshiped local deities that governed the rain, the harvest, and the moon. But with the rise of theism and Abrahamic traditions, God moved to the cafe in the sky, slipped on a robe, grew a hipster beard, donned a Merlin's cap, and became separate from the material world. This cleaving of the material and the mystical altered the way we look at our worldly artifacts. We perceive objects in the material plane as devoid of divinity and by extension, completely disposable. Plastic water bottles, throw them away. Bic lighters, nothing sacred there. Party cups, straws, takeout containers, bottle caps, gift wrapping, coffee cups and lids, food packaging, plastic cutlery, old shoes, ratty t-shirts, out of date iPhones, old stereo systems, all into the bin. These products of modernity are produced with the uniformity and efficiency that capitalism selects for. They signify almost nothing to us. It's no surprise that we have a climate catastrophe. Remember that old book gave us dominion over nature and animals, forgetting momentarily that's actually what we are. <laughs> but is there nothing sacred in the material? I mean, what about that hand-carved heartstone my daughter Lolly gave me to bring to work? Or think of that dress your mother made for you, how precious and irreplaceable it is. Consider the connectedness that it holds. She made it especially for you with all of its oddities and imperfections. When you wear it or even just look at it, it's like she's right there in the room with you. Now imagine a dress sewn in a Chinese sweatshop on a rack at Marshall's for $9.99, hung beside a hundred frocks just like it. It's a standardized commodity made by someone completely anonymous. It elicits nothing. Here's what Charles Eisenstein taught me. Material objects can be sacred and embody the divine when they are unique and interrelated. Envision your sacred space, the place where you write and meditate. Or even better, envision your ideal hollowed nook where you would be able to excavate and bury your soul. It's not littered with plastic tchotchkes. And maybe there's a photo there of your grandmother or an heirloom that she gave you when you married or graduated. Maybe there's the mala beads you wore on your pilgrimage to Rishikesh or a novel that you dog-eared when you hit rock bottom. Now, what if your closet or refrigerator more closely resembled the intention of your place of prayer and meditation? A Skylar almost passed out the other day when she waltzed into the kitchen to find me making my own proper oat milk. I mean, admittedly, <laughs> I was desperate for an iced coffee and it wasn't that hard. And I savored that homemade iced latte as if it was the blood of Christ itself. If we are to pursue fulfilling lives that are also globally sustainable, then we must dispense with the dualism that considers the spiritual and material as separate realms. We must hand stitch them together. We must eschew the disposable and value the unique, the necessary the objects that become the artifacts of our personal story. We must start treating the entire physical world like our altar space.